Thank you, Mr. President. You are a great sport, and you're setting a fine example. Of course, I'm concerned about crop losses in our. And I say this with emphasis that this administration's national farm. I will not permit our farmers' integrity to be jeopardized. I can assure all farmers and their overseas customers that we will move vigorously to clean up the problem. We will demonstrate to the world the validity of America's reputation as an honest and dependable supplier of high-quality farm products. That's the kind you raise in Iowa. That's the kind we will ship from our ports. On a pattern of expanding export, the U.S. Department of Commerce is giving its E award to the committee to you, Bob, on I think that the Democratic Party is capable of binding itself back together after this uh, primary. And most of the other candidates are just uh, part-time candidates anyway. They're going to skip from one state to another, not enter all the primaries. I'm going to enter all the primaries. And uh, I'll be willing to meet any of those other candidates in their home states, including Washington and Arizona and Texas and Alabama. And uh, if I can measure up to what the American people would like to see the nation be or what they would like to see their president be, then I'll be elected. If I can't measure up, to these high expectations and standards that the American people ought to set for a president, then I don't deserve to be elected. But, but I think the Democratic Party is capable of assimilating all kind of different viewpoints, and the campaign period is a good time to test out the different views on the issues and to assess the character and the qualifications of the candidates. I feel confident about it. I think they're looking for stability and someone with the energy to run a campaign that they can win against Ford. Well, Iowans are basically looking for a, a candidate that will represent their interests and of course those are those interests are somebody that uh, is going to uh, do something about uh, baiting inflation in this country, like uh, curb uh, federal spending and uh, you know it helps stabilize the the economy and someone they can trust and do you think that there's a candidate now that you can trust um i'm wearing a badge for one because i want to find out more information about them all and when you got one name on you then other people are willing to tell you about their candidate too so now that is what i call veto arrogance we have a positive constructive program and he has vetoed two moves by the Congress to keep the lid on oil prices. Why should the American people pay for their oil, gasoline, heating oil, and whatnot, 
at a market price dictated to the American people by the oil cartel, because that is what happens when you take all controls off. Will Iowa be able to match its share of highway uh, funds through gas revenues? Yes, I'm sure we can. First of all, we have paid state dollars into programs that have been approved for federal financing, so we really are ahead. And secondly, we have enough design in advance programming that we will be able, I'm sure, to meet whatever we can possibly get from the federal government. And in addition to that, I have asked for the legislature to appropriate $20 million, and that can also be used if we haven't got enough advance payment. So we should be in good shape in sharing uh, very generously in that $2 billion. Uh, we're very thankful that the president has seen fit to release that money. We think it will help with jobs, and we think it certainly will help with the program. And after all, that money is Iowa's money anyway, so we think it's the right thing to do. The National Governor's Conference has been fruitful for Governor Ray. This week, eight Iowa counties were awarded disaster aid relief following a severe winter blizzard. And Thursday evening, he and Mrs. Ray will dine with President Ford and other governors at the White House. This is Bill Bray from Washington for WOI News. Governor, there's also been talk of the possibility of trading grain for oil. Do you think it's feasible? I would doubt that it is. I think everything should be considered at this time when we're exporting uh, our grain and we're importing so much foreign oil. But it would seem to me that it would be putting the stress perhaps at the wrong place because we have many countries that need our grain and will bargain for that grain. But actually, we're talking about driving the price of that grain up so that those countries would be hurt, while the countries that are very wealthy right now would have not only the oil that they can uh, call the shots on and ask for just about any price to sell that to us, but also they would have a great supply of grain, and they would, uh, I'm afraid, affect the market, the world market, and it would create even more problems. Have any federal uh, administrators discussed the possibility of this with you? No, none has discussed it with me, and uh, frankly, I have not heard about uh, any discussion that's taken place here during this governor's conference. County assessors and supervisors from all over Iowa have been meeting with Revenue Department officials this week to question the figures used in the equalization order. One figure is the sales assessment ratio, or the market value of the land versus the assessed value of it. County officials have been questioning that figure, saying it's inflated because of the small amount of land that's on the market. I asked Bear about that. The study for equalization purposes uh, try to get out a lot of factors which would cause abnormal sales such as the uh, less than 40 acres for ag land, uh, uh, adjoining land, this type of thing. We do send out the final orders uh, on October 20th. Uh, after that time, uh, the local boards of review are in session from November 1st to November 30th. Uh, the taxpayers do have the first two weeks uh, in November in which to appeal to their local boards. If those increases in land evaluations are not decreased, it may be up to the courts to make a final decision. As Harrison County Auditor Dale Priscilla put it, I'd hate to have to sue the state of Iowa, but I will if I have to. This is Brett Boris reporting for Newswatch.